Hey everyone, this video, or at least the idea of this video, started out more as an experiment. It's something I want to try for some time now. The idea crossed my mind back when 2.1.0 was released and multi-source faces was introduced. I use this feature all the time. It was implemented to give a more accurate representation of the source face if you had multiple pictures of the person, especially if they were of a slightly different angle and the lighting was a bit different. But that got me thinking. In the most basic explanation of what's going on, because it's basically averaging the images together, what would happen if I took images of two completely different people and used that? Well, it creates an amalgam of the two faces. So instead of looking at a picture of Indiana Jones and wondering what he'd look like if Chris Pratt played him instead, or maybe Zachary Levi, or maybe Sidney Sweeney, and I'm getting off topic. With this new idea of mine, I can make a mix of one of the newer, younger actors or actress. Hi, Sydney. Though different, weird, maybe interesting, I didn't see too much of a point with it. Then I wondered and then quickly realized that if you add two Chris Pratt images and a single young Harrison Ford image into the mix, then you get a mix of the three images. So it looks like Harrison Ford, but much more like Chris Pratt. And the reverse would be true. This brought me to my final thought. Well, at least on this subject. If I did this in face fusion, but with a bunch of different ratios, starting with just a single image of one actor, then going to something like a 16 to 1 ratio of one actor and the other until I got to a 1 to 1 of both, and then went all the way to a 1 to 16 and then just a single image of the second actor. If I did that, I'd basically be creating a hopefully high quality morphing video from one person's face to the others. So this is what I want to try out. First, I'm going to say there was math involved. A lot of math. Like, a lot, a lot. Before I get into my method, which remember, this was just a test. I did not go with Indiana Jones for this test, as I figured I'd be making a video to put on YouTube, and I sure didn't want to take a chance with the copyright restrictions. So I went with a video that's been on the Face Fusion Discord channel recently. I then decided I was going to go with the 16 to 1 ratio as the maximum. So that would mean that I would need 16 iterations of the same source image for both the starting and ending face. That's 32 images for those keeping up. But because the video is of someone I don't know at all, I just used a screenshot of the video. Here you can see I had the 16 images that I cropped a bit of the original person, and the first person I will be attempting to morph her into is the beautiful Natalia Krasavina. If you're going to look up more pictures of her on the internet, make sure you have safe search on. Or don't. I guess it depends on you. I'm just going to keep her image up on the screen while I talk math. My plan was to do every single ratio of 16, so mathematically, that would make you first think that I'd need to do 32 total renders. Nope. 16 would bring me to the 16-16 ratio, which is 1 to 1. You don't need to do that one twice, so that means only 31 total renders. Nope. You forgot to wind your watch. Er, you forgot the start and end with only the single images of the two subjects. So 33. Nope. Er, yep. 33. Here you can see all of the ratios, along with how many images of the original and Natalia would be needed for each render. I could literally just put in what the ratio is instead of simplifying it each time, but it just felt weird putting in 16 of one image when only one or four or whatever were needed for the same outcome. As this was a test, I didn't want to go on forever with my renders, so I chose to do a short part of the video. There were other factors involved, but in the end I had 225 frames to work with, with 25 frames a second, so 9 seconds. And I didn't want to start the video with the morphing immediately, nor did I want the video to end immediately when the morphing ends. So both the end and start of it will get 50 frames or 2 seconds. Before I start this next math rant, I just want to say that it would have all been so much easier if the video I was using didn't matter for length, and I could have just said every single ratio gets 5 frames or 10 frames or whatever, and deal with that. But nope, I'm an idiot, telling a tale, full of sound and fury, 
signifying nothing. It is a tale told by an idiot. Full of sound and fury. Signifying nothing. And back to the math. So with 100 frames of the 225 taken, that left 125 frames to be um, equally divided among the 31. I didn't like the math, so I made it 30 by giving five of the frames to the last one to 16 ratio and only 95 frames for the final. I know, sense, I made none, but it worked. I looked at it as if I now had five seconds to fill with 30 different ratios. I like those numbers much more. That would mean that each 25 frames second would need six. Not the best situation, but easy enough to deal with. I just have five renders of four frames and the sixth of each second would be five frames. Something I was sure wouldn't be noticeable. Here's the full table showing where every cut would have to be for each render. The good news is that instead of cutting up the video into all of these parts ahead of time, I can just use the trim frame in and trim frame out feature in Face Fusion for each render. So now I begin the process of rendering out these super short videos with micro changes to the face each time that will hopefully add up into a nice clean morph between the original girl and Natalia. And don't worry, I'm not going to bore you to death with the entire process. Well, maybe I will, but I'll speed it up like crazy and also have chapters to quickly pass it all up. Maybe I'll even post the timestamp right here in the video for you to go to. Who knows? Or you could watch me screw up countless times in ludicrous speed. And done. Two hours and 20 minutes. Cut down to two minutes and 30 seconds by use of magical powers. I can upload the full video if you want. No? Fine. Ready to see how it turned out? Yep, so am I. But now I just have 33 different super short clips that need to be edited together. It will be one of the easiest edits ever. So... Let me bring it on into DaVinci Resolve. I use an ultra wide monitor, so I apologize ahead of time if anything is cut off on the right side of the screen. I doubt you'll be missing anything exciting. I'll start off by grabbing all 33 clips and dragging them into my media. 
at this point. All I have to do is simply select all the clips in the media bin and drag them to the timeline. They'll automatically be put in order and no editing is needed. All that's needed to be done is to export the finished video. This isn't a DaVinci Resolve tutorial, so I'm just going to show you the final output outside of DaVinci. Full disclosure, I cut off the first two seconds as I messed up and the first two seconds of the original video were at such a harsh angle that the swap was terrible. But really, the morph starts at the two second mark anyway. And here it is. To be honest, I'm a little bit underwhelmed. I mean, I think it worked perfectly, but the problem is that it's not as dramatic of a total change as I'd hoped. It definitely looks like Natalia, but had I gone with somebody more exotic looking, the change would have been more dramatic. I mean, I think it was a success, but I really want to see a bigger change. Being the masochist that I am, I guess I'll do another 33 renders. This time, I'm going to continue from the last shot of Natalia. And to be more dramatic, I'm going to morph her into Steve Carell. Yep, Michael Scott. You know the drill already. So here goes the time warp. I remember doing the time warp. Also, here's the timestamp for afterward. At least I got it done much faster this time, down to 1 hour and 53 minutes. So only 1 minute and 41 seconds here. There's really no more work at this point, so I guess I could show you the final two part video. Starting from the original girl, through Natalia, and ending with Michael Scott. Sure can't say it didn't work. There's definitely a bit of ramping in the middle of the second change, but I think it looks great. What do you think? Can you see yourself doing this? Maybe if it were a longer video where the specifics and the math weren't nearly as important? More importantly, do you think this would be a cool new feature in Face Fusion? Where you could instead just bring in the starting and ending source images and then have Face Fusion do all the math and switching? Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, I'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.